female prisoner is taken into the torture room and tied up. Undressed, she's then put into 100 pound, high heeled steel boots. As the wheel slowly turns, her legs are first apart. Then comes the most brutal punishment in prison burning the secret garden. The warden moves a pot of roaring fire to her crotch. The burning sensation caused her to wail in agony. Even the inmates outside could smell the barbecue odor. This is a prison for women. Even the prison staff are all women. The female inmates here live a life worse than that of a pig. They only get a small bowl of soup every day. But they have to do the dirtiest and most tiring work in the prison. The guards would beat them if they made a mistake. The female inmates often fight with each other. Hair pulling and slapping are just childish fights. But the one who gives the women the most trouble is the warden. Alabama. Alabama is a vicious lesbian. Every night, she would look for a target to take to her room. No one has ever come out of her whipping session unscathed. If anyone dares to refuse Alabama, she will be subjected to painful punishments, like the human wheel, a guillotine that glows in gold, a water cell full of fat locusts, a 220 volt transformer. The whole package of luxury torture will make you lose your soul if you don't die. Since the prison was built, no prisoner has ever been released from here. If someone can't take it anymore and wants to escape, it's a fool's errand. The outside of the prison is far more terrifying than the inside. The residents around the prison are all bounty hunters, specializing in catching escaped female inmates. If they catch them, down scenes of men will take turns to hurt them. Eventually, the hunters will return the dying women to the prison and receive a handsome bounty. On this day, Jeff was also sent to this woman's prison. She had a handsome and rich boyfriend, but it turned out to be a smuggler. When he realized that something was wrong, he didn't hesitate to plant evidence on Jeff. So Jeff was caught by the police. Afterwards, she met her boyfriend and cried her eyes out. He explained that he was being framed and promised to get her out. The naive Jeff believed him and took all the blame in court. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison. At this point, she was convinced she'd be out of prison soon, but all that awaited her was a dark cell and endless torture. On her first day in prison, the warden gave Jeff a hard time. Then Jeff was taken to a cell. Her cellmates appeared friendly, but they all had ulterior motives. One day, a man approached Stoke and asked her to kill Jeff and promised to take three months off her sentence if she did. Turns out Jeff's boyfriend knew that the women's prison was too high security to get Jeff out. In order to protect himself, he spent a lot of money to find someone to eliminate Jeff. And that's when Jeff received Stoke's spiked sandwich. Just as she was about to eat it, the prison lights went out and the room went dark. Jeff had to save the sandwich for breakfast. However, she woke up the next day to see the sandwich in the corner had been eaten by a rat. And strangely enough, the rat was dead. Stoke kicked the dead rat and the sandwich down the drain. She was afraid her poisoning would be discovered. Jeff was lucky to escape with his life. Later that night, Cindy was summoned to the bedroom by the warden. She looked as ecstatic as a queen favored by a king. After a night of fun, Sandy returned to her cell with a sense of relief. Rudy couldn't help but say, I see you've been doing a lot of games. Her words were filled with jealousy. Sandy was so enraged that she grabbed her hidden knife and started to fight. But before the fight could start, the sound of their quarrel attracted the warden. Sandy preemptively accused Rudy of verbally abusing the warden. They already had an affair, so of course the warden believed Sandy's words. She took Rudy straight to the torture chamber. Rudy was so scared by the fire tools and the sharp guillotine that she turned around and ran away. But she was slapped unconscious by the warden. The woman is being tortured by fire in the prison. Rudy came out of the torture chamber unconscious and unable to stand. But the warden didn't want to stop there and sent Rudy to work in the fields. Rudy collapsed on the ground in the heat of the sun and the discomfort. Jeff tried to help her up, but the warden stopped her. Rudy had no choice but to lie on the ground and let the heat wave hit her. It wasn't until lunchtime that Jeff dared to give Rudy a few sips of water. As she watched Rudy's agony, she couldn't help but think about running away. But the crowd said the warden was powerful. The prison is surrounded by her hired hunters. Even if she escaped, she'd be brought back, and no one had ever escaped. Jeff was disappointed to hear the news. It seems she can only wait for her boyfriend to rescue her. But instead of rescue, there's a lot of danger. Stoke, who failed to poison her, didn't give up. She took advantage of the prisoners to move the bucket and pushed it down to Jeff. But she managed to avoid the barrel. Stoke was furious that her plan had failed. At night, she was lying in bed, worried, when she saw the snake falling from the window and suddenly had a thought. So she removed the boards from her bed and snuck the snake into Jeff's bed. As she slept, Jeff felt something crawling. She woke up and screamed. Her roommate saw a big black snake in the corner. Rudy took a bucket and threw it at the snake. Soon the snake was no longer alive. One failed plan after another made Stoke more and more cautious. But before she could move on, trouble found her. That day, Alabama called her over and asked her to stay the night and serve her well. But Stoke, being a straight woman, slapped the warden. 
Alabama was instantly enraged and put her on a spinning wheel. Stokes' eyes were burning from the shaking, but she still refused to admit she was wrong. Just as Alabama was about to continue her punishment, the guards rushed to say that there was a disturbance in the prison. It turns out that the female inmates couldn't stand chopping sugar cane every day, so they beat up the guard and they fled outside the prison. Alabama immediately instructed the guards to control the rest of the inmates. She then reported to her superiors and used bounty hunters from outside the prison to arrest them. The other female inmates were hopeful when they heard about the escape. It just so happens that Sandy has lived in these woods since she was a child. If she can escape, she can lead the group through the forest. With the example of the two women inmates, escaping didn't seem so scary. They decided to escape immediately. Stoke also made a pass at Jeff. After seeing the warden's cruelty, she was worried that she would do it again. So the women made a plan to escape the next day. However, there was an unforeseen circumstance. Early in the morning, the guards announced that the superiors were coming to inspect the prison today. All the female inmates were asked to get cleaned up for the inspection. Perhaps attracted by Jeff's height and beauty, the leader came straight to her and asked her how life in prison was. Jeff looked at the leader and thought he was a good guy who was trying to enforce the law. So she started complaining about everything, but the leader just walked away. That's not what he wanted to hear. The warden, of course, wasn't going to let Jeff off the hook for complaining about the prison. The guards put Jeff in an underground water cell. It was dark, damp and dirty. The water was filled with big, fat locusts that made Jeff scream and cry. The guards saw that she was restless and decided to give her some more punishment. So they took out a 220 volt inverter shocker. When the switch was turned on, Jeff was instantly electrocuted and smoked all over. Jeff was sent back to her cell after a night of agonizing torture. By now, she was dying. But the abuse didn't make her give in. It made her want to escape, but reality hit her hard. The next day, Alabama gathered all the prisoners. It turned out that the two women who had escaped had been captured. The bounty hunters brought them back to the prison, but they were already corpses. Jeff was hesitant, but thinking about Alabama's atrocities, she was determined to escape. While in the water cell, she accidentally discovered that the sewer pipe was connected to the outside of the prison. All she had to do was pry open the sewer pipe's bars to get inside and escape. That night, they beat the guard on duty with a stick. Then they opened the slab in the water cell and went right in. But Alabama, who was checking on them, spotted them. The rest of the prisoners attacked from behind and kidnapped Alabama. Then they pried open the sewer pipe of the water cell, dragged Alabama as a hostage and quickly climbed out of the pipe. They didn't reach the outside of the prison until dawn. But they didn't let up and kept going until they were sure they were safe. Remembering Alabama's evil deeds, the women felt the need for revenge. They tied the warden to a tree and beat her with branches. Her screams attracted the bounty hunters. The prisoners fled. Sandy wasn't satisfied and wanted to continue torturing Alabama, but she was caught by the bounty hunters. They were excited to chase after her. Sandy was defenseless. Alabama, terrified, turned in her in, but the hunters caught up with her. They pounced on her like wolves that had been hungry for 10 days. In the end, a warden, who had been toying with the female inmates, also fell prey to the bounty hunters. The rest of the women escaped. May excellent movies be watched by more people. You can subscribe to Chili Film and leave comments.